Welcome, it's Peter Bowers here, cardiologist, and a very happy new year to all. Uh, and we really look forward to a year with the channel growing and bringing you information that is relevant to heart health. Now today I wanted to do a topic related to the bundle branch. And now you might think, what is the bundle branch? Well, often you might be told that you have a left bundle branch block or a right bundle branch block. Well, what does it all mean and what you need to know about this? So when we talk about the bundle branches, these are a collection of fibers or cables, I like to think about it, that are essential for the electrical supply of the heart. For the heart to beat at, say, 70 times per minute on average, well, then conduction or electricity must start from a point called the sinus node, and the electricity then travels down through the entire heart muscle via these two main collection of cables or fibers and they run both on the left side of the heart and the right side of the heart and that's why we distinguish them as the left bundle and the right bundle and normally electricity travels through both to cause the ventricles to contract and when the ventricles contract blood is then ejected out of the heart to deliver blood and oxygen and nutrients to the whole body. So there are conditions, however, whereby these bundle branches or these connection of cables are affected, become malfunctioning, or sometimes you might not even be born with a functioning bundle. And the electricity needs to find its way down from other sources and other paths. So the two main problems that we have with the bundles is that conduction or electricity cannot travel through them and that's what we call a bundle branch block so there are two main types of bundle branch block the first is the right bundle branch block and here you can see what's happening in the right bundle electricity rather than going through both the left and the right side of fibers and cables well the electricity is not going through the main right bundle and it's preferentially traveling from the left side. Now, you may be born with this condition, and uh, there are various degrees of bundle branch block, depending on how many of those cables or fibers are affected. You might have something called an incomplete right bundle branch block, where only a subset of those fibers or wires are affected, or you might have a complete right bundle branch block, whereby there's no electricity traveling down the right bundle, and Preferentially, it's going through the left side. So what causes this? Well, the right bundle is common. The right bundle branch block is common. And as I said, you may be born with this, and that's just the way you are. But there are some conditions that can affect the right bundle. And we look at any particular type of condition that can put pressure on the right side of the heart. Now, the right bundle travels throughout the right side of the heart, and if there is some condition that affects it, either the heart being weak or some pressure on the right side of the heart from the lungs, for example, and commonly we see this in patients who have chronic asthma, who have emphysema or bronchitis in a setting of what we call chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, from smoking, from occupational exposures, from asbestos. But other conditions that can put pressure on the right side of the heart can also be Clots in the lungs, for example, a pulmonary embolism can put strain on the heart and can cause these wires to malfunction or to non-function, giving you a right bundle branch block. So again, important that when you are identified as this, as I said, most likely the right bundle is something that you're just born with and uh, life continues as normal, but there might be some investigations that your doctor may choose to do, and obviously following on from the ECG or the electrocardiogram that you've had to diagnose the bundle branch block, then you might have another test called an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart, 
And if there's any concern about your heart going too fast or too slow, there might be various types of monitors that can be used to assess this in greater detail. Now, when we look at the left bundle, things are slightly different here. The left side of the heart or the left ventricle is the largest part of the heart. So we look at you know any conditions that affect the wires or the cables inside the left side of the heart. Well, we tend to worry a little bit more about these because it is a larger part of the heart that gets affected. So when there is a left bundle branch block, although you might be born with this type of condition where the electricity isn't traveling through the left bundle, we always like to look for any possible underlying conditions that have caused this. Now, depending on how you may present and in the setting of somebody presenting with an acute onset of severe chest pain via paramedics into hospital, if we do find a left bundle and we don't know whether this person has had a left bundle found on the ECG before, well, then it can sometimes be suggestive of a possible heart attack where the heart and the blood flow is affected, causing an immediate uh, stop in the way electricity is traveling through the wires. And as I said, that most likely can occur from a blockage or narrowing or blockages in the arteries that can affect the heart muscle. But other conditions that can also cause a left bundle branch block are anything that can affect the left side of the heart. And there are conditions called cardiomyopathy. Well, these are muscle conditions that can be either congenital or acquired through various causes, one of the more common being, as I said, blocked arteries and ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease. But anything that causes damage or weakening in the left side of the heart can put you at risk of having a left bundle branch block. Now, again, other conditions like high blood pressure or hypertension that is not well controlled and long term that can put more strain on the left side of the heart. Well, then the bundles can also be affected, giving rise to a left bundle branch block. So there are tests that we do want to do to evaluate the left bundle branch block in more detail. And again, an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart is important to decide whether there's any structural problem of your heart, whether it's not beating as strong, looking at the valves, as I said, certain valve conditions, leaking valves or narrowed valves can also cause pressure on these bundles of fibers to cause these bundle branch blocks. But again, important to have some investigations to look at you know, an ultrasound of the heart, to look at a monitor of the heart, to see whether there might be any slow heart rate that might be causing symptoms of you know, feeling like you're gonna pass out or actually passing out. And that might need to have a bit of support through a permanent pacemaker, whereby we you know, accept that the bundles are not gonna work and we need to keep the heart pumping and doing its job, well, a pacemaker may be required. And we've done a video separately on pacemaker, so I urge you to have a look at that as well for further information. So again, the bundle branch block, it's a common condition. Most often you're probably born with this condition and it means nothing significant. But again, in certain situations, particularly the left bundle of fibers not functioning properly, we do need to look at further tests to work out what potentially could be causing this. Thanks for joining me. Until the next video, bye for now.